Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to quickly go through 20 interesting things about Mario Kart Live that you may not already know. Let's get straight into it. As the late great Colin Chapman from Lotus once said, adding power makes you faster on the straights, subtracting weight makes you faster everywhere. So who's the lighter out of the two? If we have a look at Mario with his big head, he comes in at 306. And if we have a look at Luigi with his very skinny head, he comes in at 303. So three grams difference, 1% overall. And that 1% might make a difference when it comes to the competitive world of Mario Kart Live. So we all know the carts can recognize the different gates. So the gates come in four different colors. We have black, yellow, blue, and also green. And if you have a look here on the screen, you can see that the cart is recognizing that this is gate number four, and it's recognizing it correctly. Now, I thought this may be done by color, but it did make me wonder why it has to be a certain way around, because it tells you in the instructions that it has to be facing that way. If it's facing that way, it's not going to work, and you can see it hasn't recognized it as gate number four. But what's interesting is this is not done by color. This is actually recognizing not just a number, but a combination of the picture and the number. So right now you can see that it's recognized it as number four. Yet if I was to get a little bit of paper and just block up the four like so, you can see that it no longer recognizes it. If I was to take that bit of paper off and just block up part of the picture, again you can see that it's not recognized. But yet when we take it off, it's recognized straight away. Now when your carts are connected to your Nintendo Switch, you will notice that your Wi-Fi symbol on your Switch has changed. So if I go home, have a look at the little Wi-Fi symbol here, and we have a little L next to it. And that stands for local Wi-Fi. So this isn't connected to the Wi-Fi in my house. We're now connected locally to another accessory. In this case, the cars. So if we were to exit the game, you will see that this local Wi-Fi will go out, and then it will connect to my house Wi-Fi. So let's exit the game now by pressing X and close the software, look at the Wi-Fi symbol. It's now gone out, and now it's gonna come back on again with normal home Wi-Fi. If you don't use the carts in a while, Mario and Luigi will both fall asleep after. There you go, just under five minutes, and there he is snoozing away from himself. Now let's show you that with Luigi. The carts can detect forwards, backwards, and to some extent, sideway collisions as well. So watch this now. You will see that it will come up with an impact and make a sound on the switch. And the same for forwards. Also sideways, if you watch here. And the other side. Normally we have the blue light on here. When we go forward, we still have the blue light, but when we go backwards, it turns to red to indicate that you're going in reverse. Now, when you start up the game, it tells you for indoor use only. Obviously it will work outside, but it's not recommended because the ground clearance on this is so low, it's gonna struggle. Also, if it rains, it's gonna break, but the main thing is it's just gonna be getting shaken all over the place. So you can see it's not gonna last long, but it does actually work because the Wi-Fi is generated between the switch and the car itself. You're not relying on anything in the house. So as long as you've got these two things, you can take them anywhere. And if you have a look, you can see obviously it does work just fine. And talking about going over bumps, when you do, Mario will recognize that he's going over bumps and you'll see him come out of his seat and sometimes he'll make a noise as well. So let's put the volume up. And it's the same for Luigi. And the batteries are replaceable. So if you undo the six screws at the bottom here, which are little crosshead screws, take that out there. You can see the battery is a HAC038, 3.7 volts, 1750 milliamp hours. You take it out like so, and you just press that in there and take the battery out like that. There's a little clip there to allow it to go in and out.
Now when you scan your cart into the Nintendo Switch, you have to do it via a QR code. What happens if you use your phone to scan the QR code? And let's do that there, and it says here, tap here to see the text in notes. And that's it. Unfortunately, not much. I've also tried to put the car into pairing mode and see if my phone will connect to it via Wi-Fi, which it doesn't. I've also just had a little look on Bluetooth to see if anything comes up, and it doesn't either. The cars come with a safety cutout to stop the motor from undergoing too much strain. So I'm going to simulate that by just using my fingers here, and you will see now, driving against it, I can still feel it, and there we go, you can see it just gives back a little bit and that's where it cuts off. Then you'd have to let go of the accelerator and go on again. So let's do that again. Forward, still going, still going, and stop. And now look, I've got my finger on it, but it's not going anywhere. Let go, back on again, it starts working. Exactly the same in reverse as well. Let's just hold on to the wheel here. So in reverse, it's trying to go now. The red light's on at the back, and there, it's given up. And you can see now, I'd have to let go and go on it again to make it work. Now it will go up ramps, but it depends on the steepness of them because there's not a huge amount of power in here and the safety cutout cuts in when it goes under strain. It will go so far before the motor strain kicks in and it will give up and just go back down, even though I haven't let go of the accelerator. And back down again. But now look, the same height up here and even if we have no run up at all, so from there you will now see that it gets up there, no problem at all and it will fall off the edge. There's no drop sensors, here we go, people are not gonna like this. You're wondering if it goes downhill okay? Yes, it does go downhill. So let's go back up. And let's go down here. It goes down absolutely fine. Now, for those of you wondering if the ramps will be recognized by the game, unfortunately not. It's still just down as a flat circuit, which is to be expected. So have a look here. So we're off, let's put a bit of volume up. So we're going up the ramp now. We're at the top of the ramp. And you can see it's just kind of in midair there. Now what makes a proper RC car good is the fact that they have proportional steering, meaning that when you move them a small bit, the wheels move a small bit, so you have full control over the vehicle. On the cheaper cars, it's just off and then full left and full right, so you haven't really got full control. Amazingly, on these little carts here, they have proportional steering. So watch this, can you see I'm moving it a little bit to the left, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and full. And again, towards the right, you can see it's moving a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So although it has proportional steering, it definitely doesn't have proportional acceleration. It's just on or off, which is understandable because these buttons here are digital, not analog. As well as that, it hasn't got differential. So if you look at this wheel, when I turn this wheel here, you can see that this wheel is turning the opposite way. And what this allows is it allows for the wheels to go at different speed. It's called differential. With this one here, it's a fixed axle. So you can see here that there is no differential. So obviously this isn't going to be brilliant at cornering. To do multiplayer, we need to have a switch for each cart. So this is going to be player one and this is going to be player two here. You can have up to four players. So one person's going to host a game and the other person or persons are going to join into that game. So let's go to multiplayer and we're going to go to host game. So we're going to go to multiplayer and we're going to go to MMV's game. And it says join in game. And now you can see over here that we have now joined the game. MMV and Vince. And this side here is going to be also MMV and Vince. And now you can both play and race together. 
Now what's interesting is, when you go forward and back, you can see the wheels moving on screen, but it isn't related to pressing the A and B button, it's actually detecting the movement of the cart itself, not just linked to the buttons. So we all know that the cart here is not actually the cart that you see here, because look, you can see I'm covering up the camera now, and you can still see the cart, so it's imposed on top of the image. But, watch this now, when I go forward and back, you can see that the wheels turn nicely, and it adds to the effect of the game. Yeah, but now watch, if I just pick up the cart, accelerate and keep it still, the wheels are turning, but you can see on here that the wheels are not turning. If I just move the cart forward and back, even without having the accelerator on, can you see that the wheels are moving? So the B button is definitely related to him looking behind, but yet not in relation to the wheels moving. Well, that was quite clever. So we all know you can connect up the cart and use Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller on the big screen, but why be boring? I've got a PlayStation 3 controller connected up with the pedals as well for accelerate and brake and reverse, and it makes it so much more fun. And this is able to be used because of the Magic NS adapter sticking out of the side of the switch there. So now I've just got my son next to me, so he's gonna do a little bit of driving. And here you can see it whizzing along here, but yet it's better just to watch the big screen. You can see a drift there and also reverse. And it just makes it much more enjoyable when you're using it with a steering wheel. So that is it for this video. If I showed you something that you might not have already known, then maybe give it a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun for me to make and I do honestly think it's a great fun toy. Take care. Bye now.